I've been living in the storage middle ages. Well, maybe the Renaissance. Booting Windows from a SATA SSD but relying on mechanical disks to store large games, due to their low cost and large capacity. With modern games such as Starfield and Phantom Liberty requiring solid state drives, a SATA SSD is the obvious choice. But can you upgrade an older PC to support newer super fast NVMe storage, even when it doesn't have an NVMe slot? The answer lies in catching the bus. No, not that kind of bus. The PCI Express bus. My Fujitsu has two PCIe x16 slots. The top one is PCIe 3.0 x16 connected directly to the CPU. We want to use this one for the GPU. The one underneath is PCIe 2.0 x4 supplied by the chipset. With an adapter like this one, we can plug an NVMe drive into this slot. Now, how fast does this bus go? Well, for PCIe 2.0, one lane is 500 megabytes a second, so four lanes is two gigabytes a second. Still a far cry from modern PCIe 4.0's eight gigabytes a second, but at least 10 times faster than a mechanical hard drive. I picked up this NVMe to PCIe 3.0 adapter on eBay for two Great British Pounds. And to go in it, I purchased this one terabyte Samsung 970 Evo Plus for just 35 Great British Pounds, around 45 US dollars. And I wish I'd bought more of them at this price. The adapter plugs into the socket, just like a GPU. Windows 10 supports NVMe drives out of the box, and if you boot the computer from your existing boot disk, you'll see it added as a new disk that you can start using straight away. But as we want to be running Windows from our fastest disk, can we boot from it? Your computer's BIOS will need to support booting from an NVMe drive, unless you want to use a USB drive to load a bootloader for your NVMe drive. Thankfully, the Fujitsu supports booting from NVMe drives, so we don't have to mess around with USB bootloaders. I installed a fresh copy of Windows 10 on this drive, so let's compare the boot speed. As we can see, Windows boots far quicker from the NVMe drive than the SATA SSD I'd been using previously. Let's see what kind of performance we're getting. Well, this is a little disappointing we only seem to be getting 890 megabytes a second. Checking, I can see that the drive is only operating at PCI Express 2.0 times two, so just one gigabyte a second. I cleaned out the socket and even changed the adapter, but it remained stubbornly stuck at times two. Still, it's twice as fast as a SATA SSD. Here's a quick recap of the system specs Windows was installed on the Samsung 970 Evo Plus at all times, and I know I said I was going to upgrade the system to 16GB of RAM, but I've decided to make only one change this time, and do a separate video for 8 versus 16GB of RAM. We'll be comparing the Samsung NVMe drive to other ways of adding fast storage to your system, such as this 1TB Crucial SATA SSD and this NVMe to USB 3.0 enclosure, with a 1TB Western Digital SN750 NVMe drive. While not offering anywhere near the speeds of a PCIe connected NVMe, the ability to just plug in additional storage and to move it around is very convenient. Now let's see how each of these performs. After the Samsung NVMe, the SATA SSD is the fastest for sequential reads with 552 megabytes a second followed by the USB enclosure with 460 megabytes a second. However, in gaming, low queue depth random read is also important. In our results, the NVMe scores 45.46 megabytes a second, the SATA SSD 32.16 megabytes a second, and the USB enclosure has the lowest with 25.17 megabytes a second. So how does all this sequential and random performance impact gaming? Well, let's find out. Overwatch first, and previously I found this title unplayable due to frequent stutters, but when running from an SSD, it's a smooth experience. I can see that the i5-6500 is maxing out at times in this title, 
I'll be focusing on the 1% and 0.1% results as average frame rates should be within a margin of error. For the 1% low, the SSD was the best with 45 FPS, followed by the NVMe with 40.8 FPS and finally the USB with 34 FPS. At the 0.1% low, the USB enclosure and SATA SSD are within a margin of error at about 10 FPS. While surprisingly, the NVMe is last with 9.33 FPS. You can run Overwatch from any of these storage mediums without a significant impact, but it would appear it's best on a SATA SSD, or at least a SATA SSD without your OS installed. Warframe is interesting as we see a difference in the average frame rate which I did not expect. And we see high CPU usage again. Looking at the average frame rate, we see the NVMe and USB score about 66 FPS. The SATA SSD scores only 55.4 FPS. At the 1% low, the USB is the fastest at 46.5, followed by the SATA SSD at 42.3 FPS with the NVMe last at 41.7 FPS. At the 0.1% low, the SATA SSD produces the best result at 40.3 FPS, followed by the USB at 38.5 FPS, with the NVMe last at 33.1 FPS. All three drives gave us a nice performance in Warframe, but once again, the NVMe fails to perform. And while the SSD had a lower average frame rate, it produced a very consistent experience. The USB enclosure performed well, and it seems running your games from a USB drive does not impact performance, at least for Warframe. On to Battle Royale Fortnite, and the average frame rate is within a margin of error across all three discs. So, moving on. At the 1% low, the NVMe is again the worst at 31.3 FPS while the USB is the best at 43.9 FPS, with the SSD in the middle at 40.6 FPS. At the 0.1% low, the USB once again produces the best result at 11.3 FPS, followed by the NVMe and SATA SSD within 1 FPS of each other at about 7 FPS. It appears that Fortnite really prefers to be off the Windows boot disk, as it performed better on the SATA SSD and USB drive than it did on the NVMe. It actually performed best in this comparison on the USB drive, so may prefer the other advantages of NVMe drives over higher data transfer rates. It's a game I love to benchmark. It's football with cars. It's Rocket League. And we finally have a result that I would have expected. Average frame rate is within 2 FPS across all drives, and at the 1% low, the NVMe gives the best result with 60.1 FPS, followed by the USB drive at 59.5 FPS, and finally the SATA SSD with 53.7 FPS. At the 0.1% low, the NVMe and USB drive are tied with 42 FPS and the SATA SSD is not far behind with 36.7 FPS. In Rocket League, it would appear that an NVMe drive provides more advantages over a SATA SSD, even when running as the main OS drive, but either will provide a big improvement over a mechanical drive. GTA 5 on PC will be 10 years old next year, and I expect it will be a popular title for a few more years. Well, at least until GTA 6 is released. Average frame rate is within a margin of error, and the 1% low results are within 1 FPS of each other. The NVMe drive produced the best results at 40.4 FPS, followed by the SATA SSD at 39.9 FPS, with the USB drive last at 39.3 FPS. At the 0.1% low, the NVMe and SATA SSD are essentially tied at 38 FPS while the USB follows up with 36.8 FPS. In GTA 5, you would have exactly the same experience whatever storage medium you installed it on. You could even leave it on a mechanical disk drive and it would perform about the same. Still very much alive in 2024, it's Battlefield 1. Some consider it the best, despite two further games, and the average frame rate is within a margin of error. The same is true for the 1% low, with all three drives producing about 28 FPS, 
and at the 0.1% low, the NVMe and SATA SSD produce a result within 1 FPS of each other at 23 to 24 FPS, while the USB follows up with 21.4 FPS. Battlefield 1 appears to prefer a SATA SSD, but you won't see a huge issue installing it on an NVMe boot disk, and it would even be playable on a USB drive. Apex Legends is another title that seems to suffer when installed on the boot drive, as it performed worse on the NVMe drive. There's a difference in the average frame rate with the NVMe drive producing 30.2 FPS, followed by the USB drive with 31.55 FPS, and the SATA SSD is top with 34.4 FPS. At the 0.1% low, the SATA SSD is top again with 27.3 FPS, followed by the USB drive with 25.35 FPS, and the NVMe drive is last with 23.15 FPS. At the 0.1% low, the pattern is repeated with the SATA SSD producing the best result of 25.5 FPS, followed by the USB drive with 23.15 FPS, and finally, the NVMe is in last place with 20.5 FPS. Apex Legends is another title that seems to suffer when run from the OS drive. However, it was a playable experience on all three storage types. I wasn't so keen on Dota 2 when I first started benchmarking it, but now I'm getting to quite enjoy it. In this title, we see a difference in average frame rates, with the SATA SSD producing the fastest at 107.7 FPS, followed by the USB with 104.2 FPS, and lastly, the NVMe with 103.6 FPS. For the 1% low, the SATA SSD once again produced the best result with 71.5 FPS, then the USB drive with 68.8 FPS, and lastly, the NVMe with 62.5 FPS. At the 0.1% low, there is a big difference with the NVMe drive scoring only 40.5 FPS, while the SATA SSD scored 52.8 FPS, and the USB drive produced the best result with 55.3 FPS. In spite of these differences, I don't think you'd notice any difference between these three drives and Dota 2 is another title you could leave on your hard disk drive without much of a hit to performance. Rainbow Six Siege is another older title in this benchmark selection, and it shows in the results, as there's no more than 2 FPS between all three drives. For the average frame rate, the SATA SSD and USB drive are tied with 51 FPS, while the NVMe scores a little bit lower with 49.5 FPS. At the 1% low, again, the SATA SSD and USB drive are tied at the meaning of life, the universe and everything, or 42 FPS, while the NVMe drive scores 40 FPS. At the 0.1% low, the NVMe is once again the slowest with 39 FPS, while the SATA SSD and USB drive are tied with 40 FPS. For Rainbow Six Siege, it doesn't matter which kind of solid state storage you keep it on really, although it does appear to prefer not being on the boot drive. And you could even leave this one on a hard disk drive with little impact to performance. Our final title is PUBG, and it's another title where we can see high CPU usage at times, particularly early on in the game where there's still many players still alive. For the average frame rate, the NVMe drive produced the best result with 46.22 FPS, followed by the USB drive with 44.6 FPS, and the SATA SSD was last with 43.23 FPS. For the 1% low, the USB drive actually produced the best result with 24.95 FPS, followed by the NVMe with 23.24 FPS, and lastly the SATA SSD with 22.5 FPS. At the 0.1% low, the NVMe produces the best result at 7.46 FPS, followed closely by the SATA SSD with 7.16 FPS, and lastly, the USB drive with 6.15 FPS. PUBG seems to prefer NVMe storage, 
as it's performed best on the NVMe drive and the USB drive, apart from the 0.1% low that is, but you could still install it on a SATA SSD for roughly the same experience. Installing Windows on an NVMe drive, even one as hobbled as mine, gives such a huge quality of life increase to a system that I would say it's nearly always worth doing. However, I had not considered the impact gaming performance of running games from the OS drive before conducting these tests. I thought those days were behind us. I can see from the results that it does appear to impact game performance negatively and the ideal solution would be to run Windows from one NVMe drive and games from another. Say, a large SATA SSD would be fine. I thought the USB drive would be pants and perform worse in our gaming tests as the drive was connected via the USB 3 interface, but it actually did rather well, beating the SATA SSD in a few metrics, winning in Fortnite and never being far behind the other drives in the other tests. I'll be keeping a few common games on my USB drive so I can move them between systems. For gaming at least, the SATA SSD is still a credible option in 2024. It was consistently offering similar performance provided by the NVMe drives. This may change as games start to take advantage of the faster transfer speeds offered by NVMe drives. I'm aware that we're seeing a potential CPU bottleneck in some titles and I will be upgrading the CPU to an i7-6700 and we can see what an additional 4 threads does for our performance. But first, it'll be 8 versus 16 gigabytes of RAM. Well, that's all for now, Rammers. I'll catch you next time. Laters.